We can now cross live to our guest, uh, Margot Parker, a member of the European Parliament for the UK Independence Party. Good to have you with us, Ms Parker. So, uh, Johnson quitting, shocked or not surprised at all? No, not surprised at all. I, I am, in fact, surprised. He, he, he didn't do this on Friday. I, I'm surprised both of them didn't do it together on Friday, to be honest. Now, Johnson is, of course, the third minister to resign in just 24 hours. Not a good day for Theresa May. Do you think her government will survive this? I think it'd be very difficult. I mean, you can see the mood in the country. Nobody has any faith in this prime minister. Uh, she's seen very much as, as somebody who is very much the name Theresa the appeaser. She's certainly living with that, and she's not disappointing. People have lost faith in her. They don't feel that she has the willingness to deliver a proper Brexit. And we don't want a watered-down Brexit. And, of course, these two ministers going, uh, I believe there will be others, clearly. Now, how will all this hit the Brexit talks? They're already widely mocked by critics um, and beyond. And, of course, today we've even had uh, Corbyn uh, mm. denouncing May's government for wasting two years with its political infighting and also saying the government is not even capable of securing a good deal for Britain. What do you think? Well, uh, I don't think we should take any lessons from Mr. Corbyn. Mr. Corbyn can't agree anyway about Brexit. I mean, he's somebody that's been fiercely opposed for 30 years, uh, and he can't manage a position for his own party. So I wouldn't be too anxious about taking any lessons from Jeremy Corbyn. They're all quite weak, really. Uh, it's tricky timing, isn't it, for Theresa May? There's so much going on for her government at the moment, not at least with the, the Brexit negotiations. We've got uh, Donald Trump coming over for his visit. We've got the whole uh, England doing so well at the World Cup and uh, the boycott of attending that World Cup, of course. And now we've got this second Novichok incident. Boris Johnson, of course, he won't be attending the government's emergency Cobra Committee meeting now. Um, do you think it's the... Um, it's hardly the most appropriate time to quit the cabinet, or is it the perfect time for him to quit the cabinet and cause as much chaos as possible? I think that, uh, I, you know, they were left in a very tough position, I think, on uh, Friday when uh, the Prime Minister presented her paper. Clearly, it's, it, it keeps us very much, uh, that I've seen, handcuffed to the European Union, which, of course, is not what people voted for. So these uh, two resignations uh, and possibly others uh, join the real Brexiteers that actually know what people voted for. So it's unthinkable that we shouldn't stay stand up and say, I'm sorry, Prime Minister, you are not delivering what you promised. Uh, I mean, I think we need to see the, I think it's 120 pages of this paper, but already there are wild gaps in it, which uh, those two ministers saw immediately because they want to deliver to the people that voted for this exactly what they voted for. So, you know, a halfway house will not do it. It will not cut it. And in fact, I, I've seen very much on social media many, many conservatives say, They've cut up their membership card. That's quite a drastic thing for people that have possibly been a membership of the Conservative Party for 30, 40 years to actually say that on social media. So it's, I, I think she's in a very tough place with her party. And I can't see her necessarily actually remaining in office, to be frank. Mm, well, we've seen three resignations in just 24 hours, and people are already saying that uh, mm. the government's uh, in a full-blown crisis. Do you think we'll see more resignations mm. before the end of the week? I think we will, because I think people will have to remember at the end of the day who voted for this? You know, were they in a constituency that predominantly voted leave? And if they are, I think they'll have to, in fact, I know they will have to honour that because many of them will not ever be returned to Parliament if they break their word on one of the biggest votes that we've ever had in the United Kingdom. It's a massively important, very significant. People will not forgive and forget. They expect a proper delivery. They expect to be able to say, this is what we voted for, this is what we will get. Not a half-fudged report from the Prime Minister keeping us aligned, uh, tied, uh, not able to make trade deals, not able to do the things that people most definitely knew what they voted for. So from that aspect, I believe that she has really rocked the boat for the Conservative Party and many of those people that loaned their vote to her last year 
in order to deliver Brexit. So uh, it's not a great place for her to be. Mm. Margot Parker, member of the European Parliament for the UK Independence Party, thank you for your time. Thank you.